Um, so I'm not going to speak for long tonight, guys, um, and it is going to be a short one. Um, but last week, just to say as well, I brought my actual, sort of, I call it my lived-in, my lived-in Bible, because it's the one that is completely broken, um, quite literally. The spine has come off, and everything, something falls out of it every time I pick it up. Um, but a couple of you last week expressed an interest in wanting to have a look through it. It's not private. You are welcome to just come and have a flick through it, see what I've written, whatever. Um, I, obviously, as I said last week, I understand that sometimes um, when you think of a Bible, you think of like looking like it's barely been touched and like you're not allowed to touch it at certain times or you're not allowed to highlight it, you're not allowed to do anything. I've kind of passed that line a long time ago. My Bible is completely ruined um, because I've had it for a long time. But I would be happy if you guys, I'm going to leave it be if you guys just wanted to have a little look at it, see what you think. It's completely up to you. No pressure though. It's just, I want to give you guys the opportunity if you'd like to. Um, So this, oh flip, and it's heavy. Right, this, um, this week, I want to speak on something which, again, I, I love, and it's a portion of, of the Bible that really brings me comfort, and I hope that it would, it would you as well. Um, so this is from Matthew 14, and I think a lot of us have heard of this happening. Perhaps we haven't read it, but we've heard of it happening. Um, so this is Jesus Walks on Water. You heard of that? Yeah, okay, cool. So um, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. <clears throat> After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves and because the wind was against it. Uh, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come then, he said. Then Peter got up out of the boat, walked on water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. So let's set the scene a minute, right? So you've got, they were on, on a plot, plot of land, and basically there was a, a lake in front of them, and there was a boat, and Jesus said, right, all of you disciples, get into the boat, I'll follow you later, you go. So all the disciples, they get in the boat, they sail out, Jesus, there's a massive crowd. Wherever Jesus went, there was always a crowd, because he was healing people, he was, you know, doing miraculous things, um, and so there was always something to do, always something that was going on. Um, and so... So basically, he was told these people, go, I'm going to sort out all of these people. So there were masses and masses of crowds of people. Um, And so Jesus stayed behind and sort of dismissed them, telling them, you can go home now, I'm leaving, I'm off, tra. So the disciples got in the boat, off they went, and they were already a considerable distance away. And basically, the... The weather wasn't great, let's just put it that way. The weather was a bit rubbish because it says that the wind and the waves were against it, right? So you can imagine now a boat, this wouldn't have been a cruise ship, this wouldn't have been a Kiwi 2, right? This would have been a little rickety old boat, which would not have been able to hold a lot of people safely and comfortably. Um, However, they were in it and this weather was really bad. And so they're they're doing the work, you know, they know how to deal with these things, they've had to. And so they're sorting it all out and then they look out and they see somebody walking towards them, but it's on the water. Now, do you guys ever remember Dynamo, the magician? Do you remember Dynamo? Yeah? Okay, so I remember back years ago now, he he walked on the Thames. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. And so you can imagine what these disciples were like in the boat, right? They are in the middle of this lake. It's absolutely chucking it down. The boat is about to capsize at any moment and they see somebody walking towards them. And so naturally they say it's a ghost. I don't know what I would think it was, but I definitely wouldn't think that it was a human because in my mind I'm like, humans can't do that. And so they are shouting, oh my gosh, it's a ghost. And they're terrified, they're filled with fear already from the weather, but now now also because there is a ghostly figure walking towards them. And so they look out, and then this figure says, don't worry, don't worry, it's me, it's okay. And instantly they knew his voice. They knew his voice, they knew it was him. And so they were like, oh. But then Peter, he's feeling a little bit courageous, and a little bit, oh, I'm going to, all right then, we'll see about that. So he says, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. So he tests him a bit. He's like, come on, all right then, if it's you, tell me to come out to you. And I'll walk on water. You tell me. 
And so Jesus says, all right then, out you come. So Peter, obediently, swings his legs over the boat, puts his feet on the water. He's looking at him and he's starting to walk on this water. And so you can imagine the freedom. Now, again, a little movie reference. Um, Bruce Almighty. Have you ever seen Bruce Almighty? It's a bit old. Anyway, yeah, so there's a bit on there where he starts walking on water, and it's really, really funny. I encourage you to watch it. It's actually a fantastic film. But there's a bit where, like, he's walking on water, and he's, like, frolicking and dancing. He's like, this is amazing, because you can imagine walking on water is pretty cool. Um, but then, so he's walking on water. Peter, now, sorry, not Bruce Almighty. And Peter, he's looking at Jesus, and he's like, this is amazing. And then he gets a reminder of the circumstances around him. He gets a reminder that he is currently... He just got out of a really rickety wooden old boat and he's now walking when there's horrible wind, there's real massive waves. Like, I'm not being funny, there's a thing going around on TikTok at the moment for people who have, is it thalassophobia, the, the fear of water? And so people are taking videos of really, really choppy sea, like, sea, like people who work out at sea are taking pictures. I'm not being funny, it really sends shivers down my spine every time I see it. So you can imagine what these waves were like, and Peter was walking on them. And as soon as he takes his eyes off Jesus, he's looking round and he begins to sink. He's going down. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm about to die. And so the fear of death is on him. And he's like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm going to die. And he reaches up his hand and he says, Lord, save me. And then there's a real key word in this passage. And it says immediately. So it's not, he, Jesus isn't going, <laughs> you're in a bit of a pickle. You know, he's not saying that. Or he's not saying, oh, drown, it's fine. You forgot, you forgot about me. You forgot about what I, what I can do so you can drown. No, immediately Jesus reached down and he pulls him up. And Peter is looking at him and he's like, oh my gosh, like probably absolutely shell-shocked. And Jesus says, why did you doubt me? You know, and listen, being a Christian, life is not always going to be easy. And so if you're in this room tonight and you're contemplating, and I know some of you are, and you're contemplating becoming a Christian, being a Christian does not mean that your life instantly becomes easy and a walk in the park. It really doesn't, okay? If anything, it's the opposite, right? Um, however... In this passage, we see Peter, who kept his eyes on Christ as he was walking towards him, in the middle of it all, and he stayed afloat. Now, I don't know where you guys are tonight. I don't know how you feel. I don't know what situations you are facing, what you have faced, and what you are going to face. None of us know that. I don't know what the future holds for you, but I know who holds your future, okay? And so when you are in a really, really horrible situation, let's call it a storm, and you feel like you're drowning, it doesn't have to be that way. And I say that to you pretty much every week. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to do things on your own. Okay, you don't have to do things on your own. You are not built to do things on your own. That's not how you were made. Okay, and anyway, going back to the passage, we look at Peter and we see Peter and he's standing on these waters. And in that moment, when he's got his eyes on Christ, everything, the, the whole circumstance around him literally doesn't matter. The storm is still going on, it's still happening, but he's staying afloat, he's walking. He's like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm all right. And he's fixing his eyes. And Jesus' eyes are locked on him as well, by the way. Jesus isn't standing there looking on the phone doing something else. Him and Peter have eye contact looking straight into each other's eyes. As soon as Peter takes his eyes off and starts looking at the circumstance around him, he starts to sink. And that's when the fear comes in. That's when the death side of it comes in. That horrendous feeling that we get when we're so terrified that we just feel like we're going to die. I've had a panic attack before and it's pretty flipping close to that, where you just feel like I'm going to die. Yeah, That doesn't have to be your reality tonight. And so I want you guys to know that we have a saviour that walks on water. And I know that sounds really, really outlandish in this day and age. And I understand that when we say that, it's like, oh yeah, right. But I'm serious, right? Because there have been many times in my life where I have been sinking, I've been completely drowning, whether it's in anxiety, whether it's a relationship breakdown, a family problem, and I have been completely overcome, overwhelmed, stressed out of my head, and just not myself, really, really not myself. But I praise God every day that my lifeguard walks on water because every single time I've been pulled out, every single time, currently, I am being pulled out every day, every single day. None of us knows what each other's facing in this room, okay? If I told you things about me, you'd be like, are you serious? Are you serious? How can you stand there? But every day I'm being pulled out, every single day. Every day I'm given a reason to get up. 
Every day, he pulls me up and he says, let's do this, let's go. I don't know if any of you need that. I kick up the bum every morning, because I do. <laughs> and my, my mum would definitely agree. Um, but let me tell you, right, it's an incredible thing when you're sinking and you feel the water filling your lungs and you think, this is it for me, I'm done. And then somebody reaches in and pulls you out. Every time. Every single time. And I'm telling you now, guys, I'm living in that right now. I can't go into it, but I'm living in that right now. Right now. And so I'm not speaking about this in, in a way of, oh, yeah, that, I, that's been and gone. My life at the moment is crazy. Crazy. Okay? I really, I really wish that I could tell you, but I can't. But I, my life at the moment is crazy. But I'm here today, guys, because Jesus pulls me up every day. He really does. Every day I'm drawn back to him. And that can be your reality. That can be where you are. Where even though the storm of life is just going absolutely mental around you and nothing seems to be going right, you, you have a purpose. And every day he can pull you up. And every day he can say, come on, we're going to do it together. There's, um, before I, I finish, there's a video, which I will show you one day. Um, and it's quite famous, actually. Um, there was a race um, going back now into the 90s, um, like a marathon sprint kind of thing. Um, and the, the runners were running, and it was, obviously, these athletes, they train for most of their lives for this moment. They want to get into the Olympics. And any athlete who trains for the Olympics will tell you that is all you think about Day in, day out, you train, whatever you eat, whatever you do in your day, how you exercise, it's all geared up to that moment. And so all of these athletes were running around this track and it was coming to the end and one of the players, runners, I should say, well, one of the runners falls. He pulls his hamstring, right? Absolutely devastating injury for an athlete, particularly a runner, okay? And so he's on the floor and everybody's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's happened? And he sort of picks himself up and he's dragging his leg across. He's like this. And so all the runners have just carried on going and he's dragging himself. And he was saying, I just want to finish. I just want to finish. And then you can see in the sidelines, there's a bit of like commotion. And the guards are like this, like trying to stop somebody coming on. And then a man in a white t-shirt and a hat comes bounds in onto the, onto the track, picks up this man and starts running with him right? It's a really, really touching story, but it turns out that that was his father, yeah? His father, and afterwards, his father said, I know how long he trained for that, and I know that that was his life ambition to go and to run that race, so I'm not going to let my son lay there and deal with that on his own. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to pick him up, and we're going to carry on. That is exactly what it's like with Jesus, guys. Jesus does not want to leave you laying on the floor with a pulled hammy, right? He's going to come in, he's going to pick you up, and he's going to carry you on. That is exactly what the Christian life is. The Christian life is not perfection. The Christian life is knowing that you're not perfect and accepting help for it, right? So if you ever meet a Christian that's like, I'm perfect, they have got the wrong idea of what Christianity is. Um, but anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. But what I want to say to you tonight is that you don't have to do things alone. You weren't meant to do anything alone. And there is a lifeguard that walks on water that is able to pull you out of whatever situation you're in. Not fix it, but help you through it. I hope that makes sense.